I, I'm just going to start off by just talking a little bit about meditation practice, first of all, because uh, we're not going to be doing that much meditation during this retreat, and the reason is because this is like a city center, so we're going to start each day with meditation, and we're going to end the day with meditation, but in between is going to be mostly teachings. So I hope you're okay with that. I think it's kind of suitable. And then there's going to be three days in the middle where we do more meditation practice. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to start off just a little bit by uh, looking at, just talking about meditation just very briefly, especially for those of you who haven't done maybe so much, just to remind you of the... Is that a little bit too loud or uh, is it okay? Is it fine? Okay, good. Yeah. So um, uh, the idea of meditation practice uh, is basically to learn how to relax and to enjoy the present moment, to enjoy the awareness, enjoy being in the here and now. That's really what it is about. Uh, so I, and this is interesting, we'll come back this to the suttas when we come back to the word of the Buddha later on. Uh, you will see that one of the very first things the Buddha talks about uh, is what he calls the middle way. Uh, yeah, and the middle way is really a way of relaxation. That's really what it comes down to. But where we relax, but you relax in a much more deep way than what you're used to in ordinary life. It is not like going to sleep at night. It's not like just hanging out in your favorite chair or anything like that. It's a very different kind of, it's a deeper kind of relaxation where um, uh, you really relax the mind 100%. Yeah, it comes, this is the idea of not thinking about anything, about just allowing yourself to be in the present moment, all of these things. It's really a deep kind of relaxation. It's very, very pleasant if you get it right. If you get it wrong, not so pleasant. <laughs> but if you get it right, really, really nice. And this is one of the reasons you will have noticed, I don't know, if Bobby, you have the schedule? You have the schedule there somewhere? Yeah, so, so the idea is we have meditation first thing in the morning, and last thing at night. So if some of you don't want to come for the meditation, it's okay. Yeah, you don't have to come for meditation if you don't want to. Some people don't enjoy meditation, and that's okay. If you don't enjoy meditation, don't have to come here and torture yourself. <laughs> it's good news, isn't it? Torture not required in this meditation retreat. Some meditation retreats is more torture. This one, ideally, less torture. And. Uh, the uh, reason for that, now some people are just not ready for meditation practice. They try, they suffer, their mind just doesn't want to do what they, you know, what they tell their mind to do, and they get all kind of strange things happen. It does happen sometimes uh, that people, ev people even have like psychosis on meditation retreats. Uh, but usually, if you're wise, you will know that you're not ready. Something will not feel right. You will feel that you're heading in the wrong direction that you're getting deluded, yeah, you're getting maybe upset, you're getting defilements coming up, and if you feel that, then better to withdraw a little bit and stop doing the meditation practice. And it's okay, you don't have to meditate. Sometimes people think that meditation is the be-all and end-all of Buddhism, but it's not. Uh, Buddhism is much, much more than meditation practice, and it starts long before you come to meditation. So if you don't, don't want to come to meditation, fine, please don't come and come for the rest. And then maybe one day when everything else builds up, you will then be ready for meditation practice. So this is my first piece of advice. Don't feel bad or feel that you are a dodgy Buddhist if you can't meditate. You're not a dodgy Buddhist, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So you're already a good Buddhist. It's just that sometimes you need to have the right qualities in place, first of all, before meditation actually works. So this is the First point. Second point is, as I mentioned before, just to enjoy the meditation practice. And what that means is that you start off the day by just relaxing, yeah, being at ease, making sure you're comfortable, that you don't have you know, lots of pain and things in the body, all of these kinds of things. And then when the body is relaxed, the next step is to relax the mind. Make sure the mind also is really at ease. You don't feel any stress. You don't feel that you're pushing yourself. You don't feel that you're using lots of willpower and all of these kind of things. Uh, because that is where the dukkha, the suffering of meditation comes. That's also where the discomfort of meditation comes. And that is also, if, you, if you're going to go a little bit crazy in meditation, most people don't do that, but it happens very occasionally, that's usually where it comes from as well. Uh, 
by really relaxing and enjoying, these things are not going to happen. Uh, and the way to think about this uh, is uh, to imagine uh, that you are maybe coming home from work. Yeah, when you come home from work, sometimes do you feel really exhausted sometimes, really, really tired? Uh, you know that feeling? Yeah, you feel really, oh, you've really been pushing yourself uh, and you feel exhausted coming home from work. Yeah? And sometimes all you want to do is just sit down. Yeah? So you sit down on a comfortable chair, uh, just relaxing, closing your eyes. And what do you do when that happens? When you come back home, yeah? You, you, you go, okay, you're nodding off. That, that's one possibility. Yeah, that, that, that's of course one possibility. But so, what do you do when you come home and you're really like, tired from work? Well, what do you do? You sit down in a chair. Yeah, you lean back. Yeah. What, what do you do? Do you, do you, do you try to do you um, try anything in particular? Do you force yourself to think on something? What, you don't do anything, right? When you really are tired, you're just exhausted. You don't want to do anything. You just allow your mind just to whatever, and you don't do anything. Yeah. And that's a bit like meditation practice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a bit different because when you are exhausted, then the mind is all over the place. And when you are a little bit more fresh, for hopefully in the morning time or maybe as the retreat goes on, you have a bit more mindfulness and freshness. But the idea of relaxation is the same. We tend to do too much in meditation practice. But it's more like relaxing in your favorite armchair after a busy day. Yeah, you're really relaxing. You're not actually doing anything with your mind. You're not forcing your mind onto the breath. You're not forcing your mind to experience the body or feel the body. You're not forcing your mind onto anything. Yeah, you're just relaxing. Yeah. So this is what I recommend you to do. Think in terms of that on this retreat. It doesn't mean that I recommend snoring away during the meditation. If you want to snore away, please do so. Yeah? You are free to snore away on this retreat. And if you snore away, we promise to have compassion for you. Yeah? <laughs> we're not going to fault fine. We're going to say, yay, someone is relaxing. That's what we're going to say if you snore. So that's perfectly okay. Yeah? It's not, there's always someone who snores at the back of the audience. Uh, Especially if it's a really large audience. Yeah? Usually at our Dhammaloka Center in Perth, we give the talks on Friday night. People have been working all week. And then they come straight to a Dhamma talk, and maybe there's 300 people in the audience. Guaranteed there will be someone snoring at the back. Yeah? And it's kind of nice when that happens. Yeah? Because everyone can really relax. The sound of snoring is like a, it's like a relaxing sound. Yeah? So it's good. Yeah? So this is kind of the idea. So don't feel there's nothing which is right or wrong about this. Even snoring isn't really wrong. Uh, probably you need to relax, uh, and that's okay. Uh. So this is the first thing. And to be able to do this, uh, it is important that you don't strain the body during your meditation, uh, yeah? that you don't force yourself to sit in any particular way. And I would recommend you always at least to start out by leaning back against something. Uh. Even if you want to sit on the floor, I would recommend you at the beginning just to lean back against the wall or lean back against something so you can really relax. If you force yourself to sit straight, straight away, it's very hard to relax fully because of that. Yeah? And then you relax. You learn to let go of the will and you learn just to be in the present moment when you do that. I'm going to give, so that is the foundation of meditation. And if you do get this right, what you will find is that the mind calms down, everything calms down, and your mindfulness starts to arise as a consequence. Gradually, gradually, the mindfulness comes to be here. So this is uh, the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make, which is so important for meditation to work, uh, is the attitude you have. Uh, yeah? And the attitude is all about how you think about the here and now, uh, how you, whether you have a positive attitude to the here and now, whether you have a sense of metta or ill will towards your fellow companions here today. So please have a sense of metta to your fellow companions here today. Because everyone who is here today, I guarantee you, is a good person. Nobody would be here unless they were good people, right? What's the point of coming here if you are a bad person? If you are a triad, triad member, don't usually come to these kind of retreats. Is that right? Have you had many triad members coming on these retreats? Not many, right? Yeah, few. Yeah, so not so many triad members. Maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes they come. Maybe they think, oh, I've been a bad person for so long. Now I need to change. Maybe they come on the retreat. Yeah, so you have to look out. So I have to welcome even even triad members. We can welcome for the retreats. 
So the idea is to have a, set, a positive sense, positive experience of the present moment. Uh, and that is really what makes, if you are able to bring the mind into the present moment, that is what can make meditation deep. Because you really start to enjoy yourself uh, if you have a good perception of the present moment. Uh, and there's a large number of ways of doing this. And the Buddha talks about this in the suttas. Uh, and one is the idea of metta. Yeah, metta means friendliness or kindness towards other people. And it's just the feeling of being in a slightly sacred spot. This is the Buddhist fellowship, one of the kind of the uh, one of the you know beautiful Buddhist organizations in here in KL. And what a wonderful thing it is that you have these spiritual organizations right here in the heart of the city. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, and you're part of that. What a blessing that is to have these wonderful organizations that you know help us sustain our life make our life better <clears throat> produce opportunities for the future for you know improving our life and improving the people around us uh, what a wonderful thing that is uh. and then you have all these kalyanamitas uh, all these spiritual friends coming on these retreats uh, all of this is a very wonderful thing uh. these are the blessings you have in your life uh. Rejoice in that. Uh, and when you rejoice in that, uh, and you feel a sense of gratitude to all the people who have made this possible, both through donations and hard work and the committees that are working on this, and, and everyone actually working together, what a wonderful thing that is. Uh, and that is how you create a positive experience, a positive feeling in your mind in the present moment. Uh, this is one way. Uh, there are other ways. Uh, yeah, And I may talk about those later on uh, during this retreat. Uh, especially during the meditation part. Uh, this is one way of, of doing that. Uh, and I will try to guide you a little bit towards that as we go through this retreat. Uh, so, uh, or this meditation this morning. So I better stop there because uh, time is going very fast. Uh, so if you're going to have a little bit of time for meditation, let's uh, do it at this point. And then uh, it's only going to be a short one, 25 minutes or so. Uh, okay, so let's... Um, Let's get going. So sit in a nice posture. Okay, so uh, close your eyes and, <coughs> and uh, start just by uh, feeling the body. <laughs> just when you close your eyes, you feel the body so much better. So start off by feeling the body to make sure that you haven't, don't have any pains or problems. Uh, and then if you need to, adjust the body at the beginning. Uh, have a nice and stable posture, uh, which makes it uh, possible to sustain the posture for about 25 minutes, half an hour or so, uh, nice and stable, uh, and then keep on feeling the body at the beginning, just to make sure everything is right. Uh.
And uh, when you are reasonably physically comfortable, uh, the next thing is to make the mind comfortable as well. Uh, and this is largely about relaxing and allowing things to be. Uh, and uh, again, imagine yourself, remember the idea of just relaxing after work. Uh, meditation is a bit like that, just relaxing. Uh, especially in the beginning, there is very little directing of the mind. Uh, you don't use any meditation object, you just allow things to be in the beginning, uh, just to relax, first of all. Uh, if you go to the breath too quickly, uh, if you use any meditation object too quickly, uh, you won't be able to relax properly. Uh. And uh, just be very patient. It is patience that is the fast way in Buddhist meditation practice. Uh, and really you have to, almost as if you have to allow things to settle down on their own. Uh, just sitting back, just watching, uh, allowing things to be, uh, not really getting involved. Uh, because it is the involvement in the first place that creates all the disturbances. Uh, so by withdrawing and withholding the involvement in your meditation, uh, just by being patient, uh, just by sitting back and allowing things to calm down, uh, that is usually the best strategy. Uh, no meditation object yet at this stage of the meditation. Uh,
and uh, just keep on resting in that armchair, resting uh, as if there is nothing to be done at all anywhere. Uh, and as you keep on resting in this way, uh, gradually, gradually, it is as if you are leaving the world behind uh, and coming properly into this BGF center. Uh, this is where you want to be. Uh, this is where mindfulness is to be found. Uh, and if you are here properly, uh, then the mindfulness will already have arisen. Uh, so keep on just waiting and relaxing, uh, enjoying the peace of not doing anything here, uh, and see how that leads your mind in the right direction here. Uh.
And uh, if you do start to enjoy the peace and quiet, uh, to give yourself a bit of a boost of energy, uh, also make sure that you bring up this positive perception of the present moment. Uh, and again, uh, one simple way of doing that uh, is just to think of the blessing uh, in your life of having a place like the BGF, uh, a place with like-minded people uh, can meet together and do something positive, uh, do something positive for themselves and for the world. Uh, what a wonderful thing that is. Uh, and see if you can even have a sense of gratitude for that, uh, because it is indeed a rare and difficult thing to find in this world. Uh, and then as your mind brightens up, uh, you can take the meditation uh, one step further. Uh,
coming close to the end of the meditation uh, and before we come to the very end uh, I would advise you just take a few moments uh, just keep on meditating for now take a few moments just to reflect on the last half an hour or so uh, and if you feel a bit more peaceful or at ease uh, a bit more mindful a bit more whatever it is uh, if it has moved in a positive direction uh, Ask yourself why that is the case. Uh, how does this process actually work? Okay, so that's the uh, end of the meditation for now. So let's have a break till about quarter past nine. Let's see you back again then.